Good morning. Good morning. No, good afternoon. No. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? How are you? Anyone seen Tim Reed recently? There's Tim around. Kamar Brown, Ashley Gardner, uh, Claire Hamer, Hazel Malcolm, Vicky Edwards, Sonia Vicky. Donovan, Vicky Edwards, Richard Kavanagh. Hi, Mark Subs and Nadia. I hope you're well. R.I.P. Sean Locke, who's oh, one of the funniest comedians on Countdown. We'll be talking about him in a tick. It's very, very sad. Um, uh, Marcia Toms, anyone see the live the other day talking about crisis? There's a Channel 4 series, The Secret World of Crisps, Chocolate Biscuits. Isn't that frustrating? Well, not frustrating. Funny, isn't it, how things come round again? We did, the, we did the secret history of sweets, biscuits and cakes for BBC4 yeah, you did, some years you? ago. But everything comes round. As they say in television, every seven years you can make exactly the same, same show again. Well, yeah. And with selective amnesia, no one really forgets or remembers. My, um, can I just say, my wasp sting is really hurting. Yeah, explain to everyone what happened to you. No. She got stung by a wasp, there you go. On her back. I and was, Mark wouldn't help me. Well, because I was in the loop. Enjoying yourself, Yeah, it was. Said. I, said, I, was, I uh, said it was an emergency. I didn't know how to get the wasp off. Did you want me to run out? Yes. I'm yes. Not, I'm not even... Because even I Even I'm stopping myself from saying what I was Good. about to say. Oh, Mark Oakley, oh, they're so wasps evil, aren't are evil. They? I hate them, I'm sorry. I know we have to love all living things, but I hate wasps. Hi, Andrew Liberatsky. The pain's coming right into my bloody shoulder Hi, Caroline Faulkner, how are you? Silkani, is anyone else surprised at six o'clock? Where has my day gone? It's yes. been a batshit Mind crazy you, we've full done on. We've done an awful lot. Oh, all members, all cards are done now. People who won the card and yeah. last members live. I recently got stung by a bee. So has anyone ever been stung by a hornet? That really hurts. Oh, don't even Remember say Remember the first time, I think I got stung by a hornet the first time I was ever in Ibiza, and I, it, it was so enormous, my hand. It was like giant. No, I, I wasn't. I couldn't even hold a beer. I just sat down on that chair over there, I just know. flung myself down. Mark found the, found the wasp. Yeah, I had a word with it and then let it go. <laughs> Emma McGregor, panicking. My daughter in London lost her bank card and Apple Pay not working. Feel helpless. <gasps> Oh, oh God, no. yeah, no, when we're digital, you need a bit of cash, don't you? Oh, God, yeah. um, what could you do? Uh, do what you could do. Yes, I can't think what you can do. What would we do if the same happened to the girls? Well, I suppose we're in London, so you drive. You'd try and get them. Yeah. Oh, Emma, oh. I don't know what you do in that instance. Uh, well, what does one do when you run out as a youngster? It's hard, isn't it? Uh, Masked kid gaming, very, very painful. Um, a wasp thingy, it really is. Uh, currently in Blakeney, Amos, Waterman, Collins, Norfolk on a lovely staycation, beautiful part of the country. Can't wait for the Norfolk vlogs. Well, it's funny you should say that because they're going to be... Is it good weather, They're going to be though? landing any we minute now. terrible weather. Well, we did. We did, we did. Heart of cold. Terrible news about Sean Locke. Been watching him on YouTube Isn't today. It? It's very sad news. Well, I mean, I may just start with that story just well, because... we've lost a number of real talents yeah, around really that have. age yeah. that we had no idea they were real. Yeah. I mean, my, my one moment with Sean Locke was a very curious one. We were making a series for Dave, the Dave channel with Joe Brand. And Sean Locke very kindly agreed to go enter, <laughs> enter the Molden Mud Race. Tell them and, what the programme and was. The mold, and the series with Joe Brand was called A Big Splash. And it was based on that movie starring Burt Lancaster, was it? Who, um, the swimmer. And the idea was that she would swim through various neighbourhoods originally, but it ended up being a portrait of Britain through water or swimming and that kind of stuff. So we had, you know, uh, deep sea dive, you know, people holding their breath for minutes underwater. We went swimming That's with all sorts of show. people. It was a great show where she just made, met loads of eccentric. We had Bill Bailey and her swimming in a swamp. I mean, and we pulled on her c c comic friends. And one of the most highlighted days of the whole series was when we went to film the Malden Mud Race, which is in, I think it's Essex. It, they all set off and it just becomes a blob of mud, this huge hill, and they slip through it. You might have seen it sliding, slipping. Anyway, so we had a waterproof microphone on Sean Locke and Joe Brown and they got stuck. Mm -hmm. And we filmed probably for about an hour and a half just the sound of them essentially doing a stand-up routine in the middle of the mud as they could never get back. And they were just like, for fuck's sake, pull so me up, So were they really Joe. great friends? They were really good friends. Oh, and, uh, gosh, you'll be so sad. And it was just so, so... F I mean, we... And we had a four-camera shoot on it because we had one camera in there, someone was racing with them, and then we had all our cameras around the edge. And it was just one of the most hysterical moments. But he was very droll, wasn't he? He was very deadpan. He was, he was just incredible. And he was incredibly funny. And uh, I forget that he was on Countdown. Of course, he was on 8 out of 10 Cats. Um, 
And he's that, it's funny, he always used to say of himself, I'm that guy no one knows his name, but they always recognise yeah. my face and my yeah, voice. that's so true. Um, and that's him. Because actually he when you said today. it about him, I had, I had the other Sean comedian in my head until mm. I saw his face. What's yeah. the other Sean comedian? Uh, Sean's show, he died, didn't he, three years ago of alcoholism. Sean's Did show, he? yeah, yeah, tragic, really tragic. Sor- I think Soros the liver or something. Ah, oh, uh, yeah. Debbie Foreman, can you wish my daughter Brooke a happy 19th birthday? Nadra, I remember you being a celebrity pregnant at the same time as me. Oh, oh I like my Maddie. Yeah, you're thinking of Sean Hughes. Sean, Sean Hughes, Hughes, but yeah. he's not dead. Is he the one who's, whichever one, it was Sean Show, the Irish comic. Yeah. Yeah, he's dead, unfortunately. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, he, he passed away. So, Debbie, yes, yeah, sorry, let me just see your daughter's name. Debbie uh, Foreman. Brooke. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear bro, Brooke. Brooke. Not Brock, Brooke. Brooke. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Brooke. Yeah. God, I didn't know Sean Hughes had died. Yeah, I think it was the last year or the year before. I know, he was one of those larger than life characters. And I think, unfortunately, I think it was the beast of alcoholism yeah. that, that got him. Um, and I still haven't watched that documentary about Tony Slattery. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, there's a lot. It's a very. Am I 58? 57 this year. That, that world, can I just say, having just brushed up against it briefly for a minute with Joe, Joe, Joe Brand is just as. She's even more wonderful off camera than she is on camera. She's, believe it or not, she's even funnier off The production meetings were funnier than any of her stand up. She was so mm. good, such a good sport. But uh, can I just say that that world of stand up is a tough. Tough oh, world. I mean, God. Lee does it a bit, doesn't he? Lee does it, Judy. Yeah, it's a tough Judy, rigmarole. Judy, but Judy is, Judy is, you see it happen like, like the other day we were all having a drink. Judy was late, she had to do an interview. It was just, we'd just done the news on her Strictly. And then mm. she came and she sat with us and she had loads of phone calls and she was doing all sorts of things. This is what Judy does. She's like on her phone, but then she'll suddenly. Go like that, and nobody else is going to say a word because she's so funny. Right. And she'll just tell one sto- total observational comedy. I mean, yeah. it's when you see somebody that has that gift, it's just such genius. It really the is. The brain, the speed with the which you go. The whirling brain. And I just sit back. I mean, always on Loose Women. People who watch Loose Women regularly will know this. Mark never watches it. But on a, on a, on a Judy day, I just sit. I just... I'll just sit back. I just, I just sit back in the entertainment. But the thing is, I do, I do hook in. Judy pops up on my Instagram feed every now and then. She's very, very funny. Uh, Russell, but you should see her just in full. It's such a shame because yeah. she came round to lunch here and you weren't here. No. And the girls just loved her. She was so funny. Russ Souch, pity Michael McIntyre isn't not the nicest comedian I've dealt with. Oh dear, Ross. I mean, the other the other thing is is that there is another side to a lot of comedians, which is a kind of dark. I've twisted. met a lot of comedians, and they are very dark. <laughs> I don't um, think Sean was like that because you knew him, didn't you? You met him. Yeah, he was. But... but he was very droll and he was very deadpan. I think a lot dry. of times comedians, though not all, we can't generalise, they are just very unhappy people that have learnt to just be funny. Yeah. One thing I notice, if you get a group of, of comedians in a room together, they hardly ever laugh at each other's jokes. Well, because there's a lot of competition. It's very competitive. And Lee said it's really competitive. Like, mm. like you're... You sometimes when you're with comedians, you feel them practicing their mm. stuff on you. Mm. So it's really annoying. Well, with Joe, Joe Brand, what we did, do you remember we did the live show at the Hackney Empire? Do you remember that night? Yeah. And uh, she did her whole gig was pitched. We, got, we had to ask her to do a whole one and a half hour gig, which was intercepting the story. She did it all around swimming and water. Quite an achievement. Yeah. She, she performed it, she wrote it, she memorized it, she did it, she performed it. And then we would thread the VTs, if you like, of her, her journey throughout. Oh, Gabrielle, you're so true. Stand-up must be so tough now as comedians really have to watch what they say. Oh, my God, so tough. And especially but if you're riffing off... But I just don't agree off, with that. Yeah, yeah, but if you're riffing off the audience, how can you play it totally safe? Part of the fun of comedy is, is how... It's the danger. ...targeted it is and sharp and acerbic. Look, listen to this, Michelle Chandler. We're having the Nation Fireworks Championship here tonight. Oh. Here in Plymouth, they're doing it in honour of those who died, which oh. is, is very meaningful after the Plymouth shooting. But I didn't know there was a firework championship. So how do you win? Do you know what I mean? I wonder how you win the firework championship. Is it the biggest bang? Is it well, the, the biggest most noise? Beautiful, the most, no, most beautiful. Most beautiful. Most beautiful. What, what do you go for? The most beautiful. Beautiful. Do you go for beautiful oh, or sorry, big? My, my, my do you want me to massage it? No, don't touch it. Do you want it. me to touch it? Have, when put, did I have those new ones? Why don't events? I put some ice on it? It's so painful. It's stabbing. 
Peter Kay is so funny, Jackie Valina. I love Peter Kay. Shauna Jean, any tips for a pub quiz? Um, just go on Google and, uh, and ask lots of general knowledge questions. No, she wants, she's playing in it, she's in it. She's yeah. not running it. Yeah, she's in it, so she needs to know as many answers to as many ah. potential pub quiz questions as possible, so go online and, and check, check. A lot of famous comedians have mental health issues. Jim Carrey, Spike Milligan, Robin Williams. It's true. And a lot of people, if you think about it, there's a mania, isn't there, to performance. There's a mania to comic genius. Look at Jim Carrey in his films and in the, um, you know, in the, in the, what are they called, the offshoots, what are they called, the clips that you don't... Behind the scenes? Yeah, well, what are they called? The bloopers, uh, the bleepers, all that kind of stuff. Um, oh, no. Nice. Outtakes. Look at him in the outtakes and you can see a man who is just, he's, if he isn't bipolar, he should be. Liar, liar was manic. You're absolutely right. You know what I mean? Not Looking... should be, but no, you'd be no, surprised be. If, he, if he went to be... If he he get... Hang on, no, I didn't no. use the word should as in he must be. I was, I was saying if anyone could be. No, if he were to be if he were to be diagnosed, I bet he would be. Yeah. That's yeah. what you mean. <laughs> I think I knew what I mean. I think if you're I easily offended, you're... don't go to see a comedian. That's a good point, Joan Legs. That's a really good point. Victoria Wood, she was so good, Mark Okerby. Totally agree. Uh, Caroline Faulkner, of all the comedians, Ricky Gervais treads the line, but, but best, he's genius. Yeah, he's very good. I have to say, it's a clever comic. I, I'm, the reason I was like Morecambe and Wise was you never felt they were lampooning a particular person or set of society. Yeah. It was situational comedy. But observational, or observational comedy is the comedy. funniest thing, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you know, we say, oh, you shouldn't, they shouldn't be, uh, you know, we don't want to censor comedians. But if you look, at, you know, the, what's his name? What was that horrible man who's got the YouTube channel? Oh, Jim Davidson. If you look at people like that... It's funny that how just, I knew exactly what you meant. Just do outright racist jokes, outright sexist, like, so obvious jokes, then, yeah, I suppose it is good that we knuckle down on that. Mm. But to be going into the grey area and really digging around on people's intentions, and mm. I just think it will kill comedy, it really will. But I mean, like, take, for instance, me doing the impressions of Chloe. But and people saying that I was being mean to Chloe. Or when I do the impressions of Kim and they people say that's me being mean. Mm. I'm not being mean. Impressions have been done since the beginning of time. But it's very hard, isn't it? Have you seen the Albert Einstein? Or if you look again, Marilyn Monroe picture, Mask Your Gaming. Is that Insignificance? Is that the film? Insignificance, maybe? Um, old oh, film? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that film? I Marilyn do. Monroe. Oh, okay. um, but it's a fine line, isn't it? What to someone is kind of fair game is to someone else insulting and yeah. I think maybe the right thing to do is what someone said there you reserve the right not to go or you reserve the right to walk out but maybe that's preferable to saying that people can't say stuff yeah as long as, it as long as it doesn't generate hate I love the two Ronnie's two Shelley Silver love mm. them do you remember the Ras do you remember the phantom raspberry blower <laughs> There would always be the the vampire setting and then no. suddenly from behind a graveyard Ronnie Bark would come out and go <laughs> <laughs> the Phantom that. Raspberry Blower. And I loved Ronnie Corbett's stories. You used to like those, love didn't you? Love them. Love them. They're my favourite bits. I w I've always wished I could do the thing where they do Mastermind, where his his specialist subject was answering the question of the next question before it's yes, asked. Yes, yes, yeah. Jeez. That was so clever. So clever. So. So here we are, guys. Nadia's, Nadia's wilting under the weight of her wasp. No, no, under the weight of your wasp bite. I'm not. just don't want you to touch it. No, no, I just no. want to give you a really fondly hug. Whoa, did you hear my stomach? Yeah. Come to me. No, because you're going to hurt my wasp Come sting. Come and see. Da, da, Come dee. to me. It's a world of big imagination. Oh, Come Laurel and Hardy. See. Teddy loves Laurel and Hardy. And I remember once when I was a kid watching, Ted, watching Laurel and Hardy with my dad and he was on a rocking chair and walking. He was laughing so hard. The so rocking chair, wet chair went back and it flipped over on him. We was laughing. Oh, what? Because he was laughing so much? Andrea yeah, he did a real Laurel and Hardy. Andrea Jenner, phantom raspberry blower of old London town. That's exactly who it was. <laughs> it was so stupid. And his face, you know Ronnie Barker's face when he'd go for it? He'd just be like... Anyway. Sharona, we don't go glamping every year. No, it's not no. a guarantee. Only sometimes. Only no, every now and then. Um, you two have chewed me right up after an awful day. Oh, well, Rebecca we've got Moon bad Kenzie. news then, Rebecca. Oh, I'm shit. terribly sorry. There's no chicken in Nando's. Oh, man. I just saw Ashley Gardner, bless him, say 
surely why have they closed? Don't they sell anything else? And, and the sad, frustrating answer to that is virtually no, they don't sell anything else. Actually. Well, they do. Well, they do, but, but pretty yeah, much I love Nando's... Their hummus. Yeah, but you can't open a restaurant based on You know on what? Hummus. As an Arab, I love their hummus. And if I say their hummus is good, it's good. But it's like saying KFC shouldn't shut because there's a lack of chicken. I mean, their, their main attraction is their chicken. Um, what I find extraordinary is that they've got 70 of their staff, they've taken them to factories to help the suppliers. Yeah. I mean, imagine if you're a waiter and then you've got to be in the chicken factory. That's yeah. a hard job being so, in a chicken factory. So they, they say they've run out of chicken because of the pandemic, i.e. too many people in the factories, too many drivers, too many delivery men have, run, have been pinged and can't do it. I don't believe that. Yeah. I think it's Brexit. Brexit personally. Have you heard, Maddie? Nando's got no chicken. At They've all shop, had to close. They've had to shop 55 50 of their shops. Oh my God, my mate's just got a job at Nando's. Oh no. <laughs> well, it might be in the chicken factory. Yeah, it might be in the chicken factory. I think Brexit, says Julian. So here we go. 70 of its staff have been sent to factories. Fast foods fans were feeling fillet, fillet down last <laughs> night by the shortage of chicken. Yesterday, Nando's apologised to customers after running low on its popular peri-peri dish. 50 restaurants across Britain closed. It's like... It's a little bit like, I remember when I worked with Nigel Slater saying the only thing that would cause a revolution in this country was if you prevented Britons from dunking their biscuits. And I understand or what Nando's. it means. Or Nando's running out of chicken. Yeah. It's like the KFC running out of chicken. It's pretty serious. It's pretty serious. What's your favourite dish at a Nando's, Nad? I love, I do love the actual chicken. I like the half chicken, crispy skinned, I like it hot. Yeah. I like the spicy chips. I like the hummus. And I like the avocado side. God. The hummus is really good because they give you this little bottle of the chilli oil and you put it on top, it's so mm. yum. I mean, I could easily just have that at Nando's, happily. Nicola Higgins says Burger King was closed due to no staff. Really? Oh, oh. look, and Marcia Tom says that Yeovil officially has the worst McDonald's in the UK. Why? I don't know, I guess it was voted. Nicola Randall has lemon and herb all the way. Uh, David Etchell says need to start breeding chickens to have four legs. Mm. I think we could get there. Um, Sarah Begley never had a Nandos. Nads making well, me Well, Sarah Begley, now. we've got up on our meals in minutes or somewhere. We've got Nandos. How to do a Nandos? On yeah, we the have. We have. We so have. Actually, we should put put that out for people because people will be needing a Nandos. That's very true. Uh, can anyone guess what film this is a reference to? Sure. Summer, summer, summer time. If you can get whatever reference that is to, which film, we may even send you a card. Uh, Louise Garvey. I love that. Stuart Gee, I was a butcher for 24 years. Chicken fillets are a slimy <gasps> thing. Uh, Calm down, Toffee. The Wicker Man. Look at you all. Jamie Buck, send your address to Michelle and I'll send you a card. You got it first, The Wicker Man. Ah, uh, Reese, The Day the Earth Stood Still. I love cooking my own Nando, says Zoe. Elliot Gonzalez, yes, you've all, got it, you've all got it right, but the first person to win it has already won it. Now, big news that's, break, not breaking, but hitting um, the news stations tonight is that the, uh, do you remember R. Kelly? Do you remember the R. Kelly case, mm. R&B singer? Oh, um, awful, awful case. So finally after COVID, it's yeah. gone to court uh, right. in Brooklyn. Um, and we're about to hear testimony from female accusers and at least one male accuser with some allegations going back 20 years. And it, do you remember how horrific uh, it sounded? Now, again, we have to stress this is allegedly at this point. Uh, but hasn't he been found guilty of something? In the past, yeah. yeah. R. Kelly is a predator, it's said, whose fame brought him access to girls, boys and young women. His sex abuse trial has been told on the opening day of the hearing. Uh, the suggestion is that he's guilty. He's pleaded not guilty to charges of racketeering, sexual abuse and bribery. So this is going to rumble and rumble. I think this case and the Ghislaine Maxwell are going to be the two big, big court cases that we're probably going to be getting all sorts of televisual uh, updates about. Um, and of course, Kelly's defence lawyers are saying these are people, sour grapes, this is people wanting to bring him down, these are, you know, all this kind of stuff. Fans. But he kind of let himself down because, of course, he filmed so much stuff. So, you know, he's kind of implicated. But unfortunately, a bit like the thing that gets me about this is that you feel like Weinstein, does anyone else feel like Weinstein is just quietly in the background just chipping away the accusations well, one is, by one? he is in prison. No, no, I know, but he's just removing them bit by bit, isn't well, it? Well, that was always to be expected, though, yeah. wasn't it? It's very brutal out in America, isn't he's it? He's had There's two thrown statue. out. I mean, you wonder how many more they'll get thrown out. 
But as Julie Olivius Craft says, I love onion hummus. So yeah, so that, that's a big story happening tonight. Um, tell us what you heard Theresa May saying today. Oh my God, that's a big thing to suddenly throw at me. Well, I just, I just, I don't know. She just said a lot of things. I mean, yeah. she was just, she was just, I said to Mark, God, it, who would ever think we'd be dying for Theresa May to be Prime Minister? And then what was the last time that we thought that, actually? Uh, it was about the Brexit deal. Yeah. Suddenly her deal seemed very She attractive. was just really uh, eloquent and impassioned today in the Houses of Parliament talking about Afghanistan. about Afghanistan. And she was saying, you know, are we really to believe that our Secret Service knew, knew nothing about the strength well, of the Taliban? This is the quote just here for you. It's brilliant. She says, was our intelligence really so poor? Was our understanding of the Afghan government so weak? Was our knowledge on the ground so inadequate? Or did we just think we had to follow the United States on a wing and a prayer? It would be all right on the night. All right on the night. And you know what? As she said that, I thought, my God, that's what it feels like. Um, she was just very good, but but I was mostly moved by um, a chap. We didn't know his name, did we? He was had served in Afghanistan, and he is on the Select Committee, so, uh, Defence Select Committee, and he spoke so beautifully, poetically mm. almost, about, you know, the failings of what we've done and how he was a serving officer and how he fought alongside the Taliban, that they were, you know, they were they were men fighting together, brave, committed soldiers. And mm. he said, for the commander-in-chief, Biden, who has never fought, as he said, for the colours of his country, to say to the world that they turned and ran, he said, was despicable, didn't he? It was just... Oh, it's, it's, it's absolutely, it's absolutely and and, our, and and though we've thought about, you know, the loss that people will be feeling, those serving office, serving in, in the forces and families of, and people that have lost people have been injured, we thought a lot about that in the last couple of days. But listening to him today, he reminded us that, you know, when he talked about what have we done for them? We've left them in the field, basically, which you never do, do you, for your, what do you call it? Not your comrades, your fellow soldiers. What's it called? Your when allies. You're in, no, when you're in a, when you're in a... Garrison, group, your... Like if you're in the same comrades. team. Comrades. No, not comrades. I was going to say that, but that's too Russian. No, you know how soldiers don't, they will say you do, a regiment. You would never leave anyone from your regiment Unit. on the field, on you know, and you could hear it mm. in his in his voice as he said it. We've left them on the field, and not only that, the most powerful man in the world has stood there and sold us the story that they just all ran away. I've got so I've got a really strong thought about what's happening with the whole Taliban uh, and the West thing right now. I think there's a huge case of, and Boris Johnson's been called out on it. Yeah. I think there's a huge case of. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil going on. And I think the West are putting their hands over their ears and they're kind of doing this a bit. And I'll tell you what I can sense already coming through. But not the, in the house I can, today. I can tell you what God. I can sense coming through the press. No, no, and this is why my Both point is, is this is why people need to challenge them. And this is why we need to hear mm. what's going on on the ground in Afghanistan. Because I tell you for a fact, this is what the West want to hear. They want to hear that the Taliban are reformed. They want yeah, to hear that the Taliban nice. are to be trusted. They want that narrative to come out so that they don't have go, the oh, pressure of having fine. to go in and sort it. Yeah, and so women the, are going to be able to work. So the onus of responsibility is on journalists now more than ever and social media now more than ever, allowing us to know what's really going on. Now, of course, if there is a sort of more modernist and, and progressive Taliban, um, you know, uh, party, if you like, or governance, brilliant. But we need proof of that. And I'm worried that the, the governments that have been caught on the hoof, namely the British and the Americans, who it's a shambolic situation, agreed coming out at, no, at any point was bad, but shambolically dealt with. In order to justify this, they wanted to be able to turn around quickly to the world and say, oh, well, look, no, 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 look, they're saying they're good. Mm. They're saying they're good. And I think it's really important that we, you know, keep the Taliban's feet to the fire and we listen to what's happened to what I mean, I saw a report today that came through on Deadline Hollywood, which is the US PA news for, for, the, for Hollywood, essentially. And Afghanistani filmmakers are in pieces. Female filmmakers in Afghanistan are in hiding. Oh, because like they said, they said, our culture is essentially dead. You're talking about the rights of people. And you're going to be our punished Our culture is going to be removed. Cultured. And yeah, for having, having actually expressed ourselves. punished. 
Um, Morgane de Pollock, US soldiers and veterans are begging and fighting to get their Afghan allies partners to the US. Perhaps others in the UK, Germany, etc., are doing the same. It's a new battle for these soldiers. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, we have some, and, someone know, on here for whom, Caesar, for whom, you know, this whole development has been really difficult and has really played with your own PTSD and on all of your split loyalties and involvements. There's this idea that when soldiers fight in these theatres of war, that they are only enemies of the people. They're not. No. They well, that's what he was saying, wasn't he? That guy, which yeah, I yeah, wish yeah. we knew his name. You must listen to his speech. It was eight minutes. And he said, he said, you know, these, these battles or whatever they are, are won through the hearts and minds. You know, we don't just go there. And, and it's not just about going there and fight. I mean, they haven't been in battle there for years. Don't forget mm. that. They, this, is, this has been a peacekeeping mission for a long time. He said, you know, we love the Afghan people. And this Afghan soldiers were our friends mm. and were... Uh, I wish I could think of what the bloody word is. It's not allies, whatever it is when you're in a group of soldiers. Um, and, and we've abandoned them. And the world must hang their head in shame. And he, he said... I cannot bear to think what they what what fa what's facing them now. Mm. Elizabeth Gordon. I mean, I've seen enough films today. I'm yeah. sorry of the Taliban just shooting into groups of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know that girls have already been taken and been married off. I mean, those reports are coming out almost. Well, apparently they're marking houses with notable women in them on the outside. They're they're putting. Red I mean, you know, there's this awful within Sharia law. You know, so their interpretation of how a woman should live. It's very frightening. And like you said, I think you're right, Mark, that the, the West wants to breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, oh, of it's not going to be that bad. Because actually, every country in the world is going to have to take Afghanis in. I Everyone is going to have to bear the financial... I'd go even further to say that I think possibly American and U UK intelligence services... Sorry. I'd go so far as to say I think American and UK intelligence services have probably said to the Taliban high command present this version of events, yeah, to, present this Maddie, PR Maddie, and narrative to the public, present this, this narrative to the public because they want to be let off the hook. They want to be let off the hook. Mm. Anyway, we should go now. Sorry guys, we've got dinner coming. And, um, but can, do you want to hit the like button if, you're, if you've enjoyed this conversation? Yeah, it's been really nice hanging out with you, having a bit of a giggle and facing some of the things that we have to face as being part of this world. So, yeah, God. We love this space for us and for yeah, you, don't and for we? You guys, because we get yeah. to have a moment with you as well. <laughs> yeah. And Lucy Heaney, I have seen about Lady Gaga's dog walker. Yes, shocking. Maybe we'll talk about that tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. But look, guys, have a lovely, so, lovely evening. If it's your first time here, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be told when we're live. We'll be live again tomorrow morning. Um, and hit that like button. Let's see if we can get to 200. We're at 180 tonight. And who'd have thought we'd have rather seen Theresa May running things than anyone else? I Air love Theresa May now. Yeah, God, she seems like a radical, plugged-in human. She doesn't seem like a humanoid. She seems like a human. There you go, you've hit 200. Guys, seriously, have, have a lovely evening. Like Ashley, Tots. have a good swim. I'll be doing some lives in the midst of Love Island tonight. Oh, there you go. So see you there. Stay safe, San Diego. Bye.